<laughs> I'm not going to do anything. But okay, you know, yeah. let's let's just go ahead. I'm going to see if this sounds good enough. If it's not good oh, enough, okay. I'm going to go to I'm going to go Audacity and then re-record this. But okay. You know, this is for the month of I guess March right now. I am talking yep. again to Dr. Death. And this should be a rather shorter month of betas, but they are betas nonetheless. So I will let you start with the first one, Dr. Death. What do we have right now? Okay, well, we've got the Uberpore 69, which I think we talked about a little bit last week, but I don't know if that actually made it into the show. And uh, that is a SIG P226 frame, which I absolutely love the P226. It's one of my favorite pistols. Um, and to my knowledge, this is the only P226 frame. Uh, it's held up in testing to so far 700 rounds, which is crazy for, a you know, especially for a printed frame that's still in beta, you know, it's, a you know, it's a more expensive kit to get a hold of, but you're also getting a thousand dollar gun for probably half price. I really like that one. Then we also have the, uh, Kevin Nguyen. You know, good old Vin. He's got the uh, PPX-16, which is a printable free, uh, P-Run X-16. One of those really neat bufferless uppers, you know. Uh, they're, they're a pretty fun one. You know, it's a, once again, another little bit more expensive kit. But, you know, damn, it's cool. And it's compact. You know, if you need a good truck gun, or if you're hiking, or if you just need anything that's a little bit more compact... Uh, that's a great option. And then one of the really interesting things, and this is where we can get into more of a conversation, is the uh, Riptide Rails Riptide Holsters. And those are printable holsters for the Glock 43, 43X, 26, 19, and 17. And they're completely printed, completely DIY. And what I like about that is that up until now, there hasn't been very many printable holsters. And considering the price of a good holster, I think that that's a uh, that's that's sort of an oversight by the community. No, I, I agree. Almost, it's definitely for like the w more obscure, also gun types as well. That opens a lot of doors for like specifically the the weirder parts kits, like a Walther PPK. There aren't really many inside the waist hol holsters, probably for that. I bet. Like, there are... No. This is a beginning, I think, I think will probably balloon out more. I mean, hell, if you look at was it the PSA dagger, that is technically not even a Glock 19. A lot of the no. holsters that work for Glock 19s do not even really work for a PSA dagger. I'm using a T-Rex Arms one, and even that one, I had to do a lot of modifications to get it to function properly. Uh, you, <laughs> yeah, they're just enough off that they don't quite work. Right, and that I think is a, it's a big step, and I think if we can get this to work, then the possibility is open to basically every single handgun, which I think is, that is a yes. huge step in the right direction in that regard. It's, it's opening the door. Once you've got a good system figured out, and you make it work for the Glocks, it can be adapted to anything. I mean, your Taurus, your Beretta, Colt 1911s, uh, non-Colt 1911s, <laughs> really anything that you want, you know, you can adapt that basic form and make it work. And then, you know, for certain gun combinations, they are weird enough that you will have a hard time finding a holster. And this is an option now. Uh, a very viable option for carry, you know? Yeah, and it allows carry for almost anything, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, once it's figured out and, you know, if it can be adapt, you know, once it's adapted to it, yeah. And, uh, you know, a lot of people like the synthetic holsters more. And this is going to let you uh, get one pretty darn cheap and you can customize it a little bit and make it yours and make it the way that you want it to be. I think that it's a great, option i think that it's a great idea because you know a handgun's only really useful if you can carry it so if you have a lot of you know printed guns that's great and all but uh you're gonna want a good way to to hold on to that too you know and uh appendix you know like in the waistband 
you know, without a holster, that gets a little bit, it gets a little uh, risky. <laughs> this is probably going to be the next biggest step, or one probably one of the most useful innovations you'll see, even for people that aren't really like, you know, fully, I'm going to print every single gun I own type of guys. I think you'll have people that are just typical gun guys that will see this type of you know, technology being made and actually making their own holsters themselves because, you know, a holster is, it really is just basically plastic in of itself. Yes. And it's also a great way to get those people involved in 3D printing uh, and involved in printing 3D printed guns because if they are coming into it from a more traditional background in firearms, they, you know, some people are nervous about 3D printed guns. They don't know if they can trust them. They don't know if, uh, you know, oh, well, what if it blows up? What if I do it wrong? Well, this is something that's not going to be pressure bearing. It's going to get you comfortable with your printer and with the idea of 3D printed firearms and firearms accessories. That's always why my usual go-to for a first printed gun project is usually waffle mags. Uh, it's not something, <laughs> it's not something that is too complex, but it's going to teach you how to calibrate your printer. And at worst, at the worst possible situation, if your waffle mag doesn't work, what will end up happening is, is it's just not going to feed properly. Yeah. And that, I think, yeah. is much better than, oh no, my frame exploded on me. That's just not going to happen with a waffle mag. Yeah. It's quite literally the worst thing that will happen with a, 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 a very poorly printed waffle mag is either it won't fit inside the mag well or it just won't feed properly. I will say, so, so far, I guess this month is rather short and everything we have. Is that about it? Well, we have the uh, Partisan 9 V2 beta, which has just opened up. And that's pretty darn interesting. That is uh, the next evolution in the Partisan 9. And this one gets rid of the buffer tube completely. On the last one, the folding stock or brace, depending on what uh, length barrel you made, uh, contained the buffer spring. This one, it's all self-contained in the receiver, and uh, this also uses Scorpion mags instead of Glock mags, which I know a lot of people were asking for. Yeah, but a Brazilian parrot is happy to hear that. He is thrilled to hear it. I saw him in the comments, and he was very excited. So, okay, so it's a Partisan 9. It has the nice yes. suppressor, everything, too, I'm assuming, as well, uh, the... The I guess it's basically yeah. the MP5 SD uh, suppressor where it has a bunch of uh, vent holes where it decreases the gas pressure so it lowers yeah. the velocity so you can have a sub you can turn a supersonic nine millimeter round to a subsonic new or nine millimeter round something very very interesting and very very cool but that is I mean that now coupled with a fully bufferless design that is rather interesting it's way more compact that's the nice thing like it is the size of an MP5K. Like, it is a small little package, and it's going to be great for, uh, you know, running gun type events and, you know, just having an absolute blast on the flat range. Oh, yeah, that, that is, I think the Partisan 9 is by far one of the more interesting designs, too, if it's a fully DIY design. And, yeah, no, and if you want to, depending on where you are, maybe you might want to print out the suppressor. You know, of course, if you're in America, you go ahead and print out your tax stamp of course but if you are somewhere else you know who knows maybe maybe it's legal just to throw a suppressor i'm not even gonna bother who who is gonna be the one to ask you right oh exactly and one of the very interesting things also about the uh, partisan 9 v2 is that there is a uh, another version of it which is the partisan 9 ump9 and that is a reskin of it and redesign to uh internally it's the same as the v2 partisan 9 but externally it looks like the uh h and k ump so you know if you want a little bit different aesthetics right there's an awesome option for you and that has printed bags with it and everything that is that is awesome i always love the ump you know the ump is a cool looking gut you yeah. got that hk cool fact now, is there anything else this month? Again, I understand this is a little bit of a shorter month, so I, there's not really too much. You know, that is really it. If you want me to talk about an older design that we haven't uh, done yet, uh, you know, I was messing around today with uh, the Gerald Katz uh, 950 BS. It's a little 25 ACP pistol. I love that thing. It's super reliable. It's been tested you know, to hell and back, 
um, Katz just released an updated file, you know, with just, he, he's perfecting it, I would say. And, uh, you know, I already thought it was perfect. It slaps together. It works great. And uh, it's in the best caliber of all time, 25 ACP. Well, that's a wonderful caliber, too. Definitely a good or, or carry caliber as well. <laughs> But yeah, no, yeah. that's of course nice to hear as well. You know, it, it's one of those. I, I think I've heard about. I remember this one too, a little bit a while ago as well. I'm glad to hear that, that one's still, I guess, you know, still in beta as well, or at least it's still continuing. It's also on. a cheap kit. Yeah, it's also a pretty cheap kit. You can get them for like less than seventy five dollars usually. Well, yeah, no, and that, uh, yeah, it's nice. It's a Beretta. Well, yeah, the the Italians do make some cool guns. I gotta agree there as well. But I, I like I like them. I will add, you know, if that is, you know, I guess at least the current betas that we have now, I might as well just throw yeah. in one as well. I think last time you threw in the fun uh, nine millimeter DIY uh, body or body armor piercing one. That, that was a cool one. But I'll add this oh, one yeah. too in because I actually got to speak to the developer recently for this one. This was a, I'm trying to remember the exact name, but I think it might be the RBC nine or something. But essentially this one is, uh, but this one is a belt fed nine millimeter belt. Yeah. Belt fed nine millimeter roller delayed action, fully DIY PCC in that regard. It, it's a, the developer is a interesting guy. I had to say that um, he's not affiliated with any group currently from what I know. But it is a design that is currently right now in beta. He released, I guess, the beta files on Odyssey. It is, again, like I said, is a 9mm roller delayed, belt fed PCC. And the documentation to it is probably one of the best I've ever seen, especially for a beta. It, it kind of rivals near the FGC 9. It's really good. I, I was looking it over. It is a really cool project. And it, uh, his documentation made me envious. Like he he did an excellent job with it. Very clear, step by step. I mean, fantastic job. Yeah, no, and you know, hopefully, while things are, hopefully, if I can get back to my computer in time, I'll have the recording for that one as well. I currently don't, so I'll try my best to get that out as soon as I can. It's gonna be a little bit longer for that one because I. I left at the wrong time, but when I have the opportunity, I'll hopefully try to get that one out there and maybe even have them on a stream too, because I think this is probably what a lot of people are interested in specifically, because not only is it just bell fed, it is roller delayed, it is a DIY roller delayed system. And I think I should really emphasize that part too. It is a DIY roller delayed system. It is not using an MP5 parts kit or anything else like that. The only, I guess, regulated part i believe is the barrel which is an ar9 barrel you could yeah maybe make it which a... would not be hard to uh improvise of course and that was actually a part of our conversation we spoke about was you know what is the possibilities for an ecm barrel as well for him it was just easier to just do an, an ar9 barrel and you know i can understand that as well but practically everything else yeah. is just fully di wide it yeah he has run into some minor issues which i just think with a beta process alone you'll probably be able to figure it out but if this is also one of those other designs where you know you might not really care that much even for the belt fed aspect of it but you know especially with diy guns um magazines are quite challenging <laughs> The Mendez mags, or the, the Mendez printed Glock mags, are some of the best in that they are one of the more reliable DIY mags currently available. The only issue is you just have to find a Glock spring. A belt yes. fed is, you don't have to deal with that, actually. You don't have to deal with any special mag springs. That also yeah. being said, though, too, is the roller delayed action, if, if this is to work for 9mm, that would also mean at some point this could possibly be scaled up for a rifle caliber. And yes, it absolutely. And if you can imagine what that means is if it is possible to get a rifle caliber, you know, fully DIY design, well then congratulations everyone. We have done something that is beyond what I think most people thought was capable of a fully DIY rifle caliber 
you know, rifle. You've got a printable saw, basically. <laughs> well, th that would be if you want to go the belt thread route of it, which you know, would be cool. Yeah. Currently, right now, of course, it is for a nine millimeter. But again, this is kind of the beauty of printed gun designs is that, well, currently, yes, it is for nine millimeter only. I think if it were to come out and fully be fleshed out, one could probably see this and then, you know, add their own little flair to it. And at some point, you know, maybe someone else can go their own way and find a way to get a reliable, you know, higher pressure cartridge in it. Whether it is now or later, that, that's not really relevant. But the point is, it will be, if it is possible to get now, someone else can see this and add on to it. And that is why I think this is probably the most interesting probably the most interesting DIY design out there currently in that regard of I don't really think anyone has done a fully DIYable delayed action like this no this is if he can get it nailed down uh this is going to be huge because it's going to open up a ton of doors people are going to you know can I look at your homework but in reality that's the whole point of the copy left movement you know it's the Foss cat idea that you know you take these other people's work and then you improve on it and you know you scaffold development and i think that if he can make that work i mean look at all the things h and k did with the roller delayed system they they made it work with 308 you know uh so if this can work it's going to open up diy rifles and it's going to open up diy belt fed uh semi-autos or full autos depending on what part of the world and what licensing you have um this is the next step up we're not in direct blowback pistol caliber carbines anymore you've got an actual locked breach action or somewhat locked breach delayed action um and that is going to be really big i think that any help that this guy needs i i mean i'm very interested in building one myself uh i i just think that uh the fact that he was even able to get the links to work and the printable links is huge like that alone just designing a feeding mechanism is a big step forward no and i completely agree and i i really i remember his, his name too he's, he's had a couple of nicknames as well i'll be sure to post it up there as well with them too in the description as well i, I i'm embarrassed to do because i didn't get to speak to him as well again it that was a conversation where you know we were going through a lot of it and then i realized midway through it's like i wanted to try to keep it within an hour if i wanted yes. to cover everything properly it was going to go well beyond like three hours. It, it would have definitely gone beyond that because there, each of his does. It is by far the documentation I think of. There was just so much in that documentation that you can stop and look at each part of it and probably have a bunch of questions that you can get answered easily. I I honestly would love to talk to him. So, like, uh, because, like I said, the innovation that he has displayed is huge. I will see whether or not I can just have a stream with him. In that case, we can talk more about it. I think that's probably the best case scenario for him specifically, because there is just so much to go through in that. It would be it would be a lot of editing, and there, there's just a lot of different avenues you could go through with that design in of itself. It is by far, I think, the most interesting fully DIY design currently right now out just because again it is not just belt fed which is a unique magazine set it isn't using Glock mags it isn't using Evo mags it's using its own unique belt fed system which isn't really isn't that hard because everything is printed as well and it's also roller delayed well and if you live in a magazine band state I mean there's no real regulations on belts <laughs> Just exactly. saying. That's not, that's not wrong either. But yeah, no, it, it is, I think, one of the more interesting designs out there. Again, he is not currently using any of the, or he's currently unaffiliated, so he isn't using any beta system. It is on Odyssey. I wish I was better at remembering things currently, but I will drop a hint of where it is, where you can find it. But yeah, no, that is... 
I guess that's basically going to be it, really. There really isn't much else to add to this, right? No, no. You know, and that's the time of year. You know, uh, some months you've got a lot more betas. Other months you don't. Some months there's a lot to talk about. Other months there's not. And uh, that's the fun thing. You never know what you're going to get. Well, I guess we'll have to end it there in that regard then. Yeah, there really there just isn't much more else to add to this. So thank you, Dr. Death. I'm so glad to speak to you again. And, you know, I guess we'll... See you next month, right? Absolutely. Yeah, thank you so much for having me on again, and I'm looking forward to it. All right. Well, thank you very much, and see you next month.